Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it! Welcome to Successful Dropout. This podcast is for the outliers, the innovators, the rebels, those that dare to dream and act on their dreams. I'm your host, Kylan Ginger. Join me as we find out what it takes to drop out, grind, and succeed. How's it going, everybody? I've got some pretty exciting news. If you listen to the podcast much, you know we've been building a pretty vibrant community of truly, truly extraordinary people who have committed to an unconventional route through life. The Successful Dropout audience has been growing a lot, and I get a lot of people reaching out to me now with all sorts of questions regarding education, dropping out, opting out, entrepreneurship, resources, networking, etc. So much so that I decided it was time to create a more accessible community on Facebook so that we can all ask and answer these kinds of questions together, as well as celebrate our successes and encourage each other during um, inevitable adversity. So I've created a closed Facebook group, and I want to invite you to join it. If you follow Successful Dropout, if you resonate with our philosophy and want to help me grow this thriving community, go to SuccessfulDropout.com forward slash group. This community is for the rebels, the outliers, the innovators, the doers, and those who dare to dream and act on their dreams. If you're a dropout, an opt-out, if you're thinking about doing one of those things, if you're a parent, even if you aren't any of those things and you graduated school, I want to invite you to join. All that matters is that you resonate with the successful dropout philosophy and that you enter the group with the intention to provide value to the other members and not just receive value yourself. Again, go to SuccessfulDropout.com forward slash group to request admission. Once you're a part of the group, introduce yourself and get involved and I'll see you there. What is up, successful dropouts? Get stoked because today on the show we have Abby Sager. Abby, who is currently 18, founded the Diverse Gaming Coalition after being heavily bullied in high school, causing her to drop out among other reasons. Uh, Diverse Gaming Coalition focuses on ending bullying and harassment while modernizing the culture we use to educate about harassment. Uh, She cares about various social issues while volunteering for organizations such as Born This Way Foundation, Peace First, and many more. She is uh, currently a sophomore at Southern New Hampshire University studying nonprofit management, uh, and understandably so. Um, So, Abby, that is the intro I have for you, but tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, hi. Well, thank you for letting me on the podcast. Um, Yeah, I... um my day-to-day life, um, cause I, t- that intro sounded a lot more interesting, but, uh, my day-to-day <laughs> life, uh, it's pretty normal, basic one. Um, I work part-time for the U S postal service, um, which I love doing. I love talking to all the people that, uh, right on. live where I work and I love serving those people. Um, and then, my other part-time job, as I like to say, is working on the Diverse Gaming Coalition, um, and that I also have a lovely husband and dog that I live with and spend a lot of my time with because I love them very much. You're you're married? Yes. <laughs> and are you are you 18? Correct. Dang, that's that's so young. <laughs> I mean, I got married at 21, and so I've been married uh, a little over seven years now, and so I mean. I would say I got married young, but 18, yeah. That's when my parents got married, 18 and 19. Yeah, I one of my coworkers uh, got married at 18, and she's about to retire, and uh, they've been married uh, almost close to 40 years or maybe a little over 40 years, so yeah. Wow, yeah, that's something you just don't see very much anymore. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's funny that you say that, though, because my sister got married at 19. <laughs> so. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> it's got it. Yeah, it must be like a family culture thing. Cause uh, I mean, my sister got married. She was, oh dang it, Lachelle, how old were you? She was twenty, twenty one, I think. Uh, and then, yeah, <laughs> I have cousins too that all that all got married young as well. But then a lot of and then friends. But then uh, a lot of other people I know are just. It's just not 
not really a thing as much as it was. I it's guess, either though. I feel like you either get married really young or you just wait for a long time. I feel like there's not a lot of in between for a lot of people. <laughs> That's what yeah. I, at least what I um, notice. Yeah. So did you guys like date in high school or middle school? <laughs> um, we dated. Um, I'm. He's a little bit older than me. Um, I dated him in high school while I was in high school, and um, we actually lived um, about six hours away from each other at the time when we did, um, uh-huh. which is crazy to think about it that we started that way and now we're married. Um, but yeah, I you know um, I think he might have been a sophomore or junior in college yep. at the time when we started dating. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, pretty similar story. I was in high school. I was a senior in high school, and uh, Tay was – she was a freshman in college. So I was also in high school <laughs> dating somebody in college, and uh, we lived we lived like three hours away from each other for the longest time. Wow. Uh, and then states away for a while. She lived in Colorado and stuff. So Oof. That, that was always interesting. But that uh, – I mean, I think it's the true test of a relationship, right? If you can do the exactly. long distance thing. And then I was in the military too, so we were – I was gone for months at a time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, still, uh, still together. So I, I would uh, – so – oh, so so how long ago did you get married then? Um, I actually got married back in July. Um, not that long ago. Gotcha. Um, but – yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, and then for anybody else listening, for whatever reason, before we got married, everybody was saying that the first year is like the hardest, and then it just wasn't. And after the first <laughs> year, this they said everybody said the seventh year is somehow the hardest. Like the seventh year, I don't know if it's statistically like that's when most people get doubts or get divorced or whatever. Like you know, but we just passed our seventh anniversary, and uh, nice. it's it's even it's even better. So. Uh, the naysayers can suck it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, people will say that about the first year, um, but you know, I lived with him a year before we got married, so um, I there wasn't so you really kind of test it out. <laughs> yeah, I got like a test drive, I guess. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I there, I mean, we're just getting into like what six months now, and I have not had any issues with you know, marriage life or anything. Yeah. You know, and at the, at the, I mean, this, this show is about more than marriage, but I don't think we've actually ever talked about like marriage or, or significant others on the show at all. Maybe that that's might be a good topic. We go to into at some point, but the number one thing for us, (laughs) man, has just been like, she's, she's my best friend. And we're just like, we're really, really good friends. At the end of the day, we can, we have some gnarly fights sometime. And by gnarly, I mean like, you know, nobody's throwing punches or anything. Oh, we're just, no. we get heated, you know, we're, yeah. we both are, have strong personalities, but, but at the end of the day, it's like, we could fight and fight and fight, but it's like, we still like to hang out. So it's like, oh, okay, exactly. well, I'm done fighting. You want to go like, go hang out and watch a movie or <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we just like to hang out. And that's what I think has been, been the key for us. But anyways, we can move on uh, to my next unrelated uh, question, which is you work for the postal service. Do you deliver your own mail? Um, so I actually don't deliver mail. I'm the lady you see at the counter. Oh, I'm asking, uh, yeah, I know. It's, um, I've always wondered that question, though. I was hoping uh, you could answer it. <laughs> but my husband was a mail carrier, actually, and he was a mail carrier in the town we live in. And um, he didn't deliver his own mail, but um, if he ever found his mail or another carrier had his mail, he was allowed to take it. Cause it's okay. Nice. All right. All right. Yeah. I've always wondered that. Okay, so <laughs> let's let's move on. Let's talk about D- diverse gaming coalition. So, how long has that been around? Um, so, when diverse gaming it? coalition just hit its one year mark, uh, mid November. Nice. Um, Congrats! Thank you. And we just became a five hundred one c three a little over a month ago now. Oh, sweet! Did you have entity any uh, entity structure before that, or was you just just making things happen? Oh yeah, I was just making things happen. I was seeing where I could go with it, and it kind of took off, I guess. And um, I wanted to see um, actually being a registered nonprofit if we could dive a little deeper into things. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And so, and I do, I do want to dive deeper into that. First, I want to ask you though you you're currently a sophomore at Southern New Hampshire University. 
Now, we do have people that haven't dropped out on the show, but the show is Successful Dropout. So I, I have to ask you, how, like, how is that going? Have you ever had any thoughts about dropping out or opting out? Do you think if, and I'm asking a lot of questions in a row here, but <laughs> do you think if Diverse Gaming, say it, it just it, it, in the next year, like a lot of business, it's somewhere between like your three and five. If they're meant to be, that's when you start to really gain some traction. Do you think if Diverse Gaming Coalition sort of took off, you'd consider dropping out? Or I guess, what are your general thoughts around that? So I've considered it because the major that I'm going for is pretty much what I'm already doing right now. Um, <laughs> that's it, which the other is, thing I was going to bring up too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and it's weird to think about that, but I've my first year in school, evidently, that was my whole, I guess, crisis is why am I even in school? I'm mm -hmm. literally doing what I'm going to school for. Um, right. But this year, my thought on it is, you know, I love what I do and I want to make sure I could do that as efficiently as possible. Um, and I've even considered getting my master's in my degree field, uh, which is insane. Uh, but, um, yeah. And well, so do you, do you feel like you're getting, uh, like you're, I don't know, I develop, so cause you're, you have a nonprofit, right? Mm -hmm. for, and for people listening, I'll just, let's just clarify you. You have a nonprofit, you're actually doing it, like you're building it, but you're also studying nonprofit management. Mm -hmm. So I guess what, what are you, gaining you mentioned that you, you just want to do things more efficiently sort of uh -huh. really just become an expert in in the field what are what are you gaining from college that you aren't gaining from actually just building a nonprofit right now is is what i'm curious about so this is going to sound bad but the real world the real world sucks um and i feel as if with a degree, uh, people would take me more seriously, which really sucks to say that out loud. I've never really like <laughs> voiced that. Uh, but again, non the nonprofit field is very strange, and um, there's a lot of competition, which is weird because nonprofit, you think everyone's kind and nice to each other, yeah. but <laughs> that's really not the case. Really? And yeah, um, there's a lot of competition, um, and I feel as though if with a degree um, that will kind of support me in that competitive feel. I think that's the biggest thing for me. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think that's, that's definitely, I think obviously a fair feeling to have. I, I mean, a lot of the people I've talked to who are, who are in college, that is one of the main reasons is if I, ha if I go to college and I get this credential, like this credential, this degree proves that I have the capability to go do, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, I guess a follow-up question is, again, let's say, because I, I assume, you know, Diverse Gaming Coalition, you said it's it's sort of just starting to take off or gain traction to the point, I guess, where you had to actually create a legal entity structure and stuff mm -hmm. um, to take it to the next level. So people know about you. You got a good website up. It looks like you got some some interest. And so you're really sort of, now you have a platform and sort of a base of operations to start actually building something off of and creating more of a, a growth strategy. And so this next year could probably be really telling for you on whether or not this thing is going to work. And I would wonder, mm -hmm. say it does like really take off because, you know, this is I, I was a I played a lot of Call of Duty like this is a this is definitely an issue. right? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, th say this really does take off. Do you think that having a successful nonprofit? I mean, can you can you project your feelings that far? Do you think you would feel like you're qualified enough if you'd actually built something to to just quit and not earn the degree? Um, yeah, that's something I've definitely considered. Um, especially my husband goes to the same school as me, and he's getting um, a business degree as well. And um, I feel like the thing for me that's keeping me in college is having that kind of safeguard um, for, I guess, jobs job prospects um say i want to move past diverse gaming coalition give the ceo spot to someone new um mm -hmm. again that could um really benefit me with a degree uh but you know say diverse gaming coalition again does blow up and um becomes this big thing and that would be something i wouldn't need a degree for and i want to stick with that for 
few years, then I would definitely consider leaving college because I still have about two and a half years left. Right, right. And do you mind me asking? You don't have to answer. I can cut it out. But do you are you uh, paying for it out of pocket or do you have like student debt? Um, so I being married, that gives me a Pell Grant, uh, compared to having to be on my father's income, which he makes, uh, too much money for us to get any federal assistance. Um, but I am fortunate enough to have a college savings plan. unlike my husband where he's in debt. Um, but yeah. Okay, so you're not necessarily in 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 much debt yeah. at all. Do this this okay. isn't yeah, this isn't something that's very financially binding for me, I guess. Yeah, and that's I think that's fantastic. I'm I'm just you know, I hope you don't mind. I'm just trying to explore the the reasoning and and your your thoughts behind this because we the most people that come on the show have dropped out at some point and they're in the process of, of building a business or they've, they've landed a job of some sort. Most people listening are considering dropping out. And by no means do I, I – I'd never just advocate for just one or the other. I'm not mm-hmm. the, the person who screams like, everybody has to drop out. College is crap. You know, <laughs> but – I think I think it's like a tool, you know, you can uh, if you use it for the wrong purposes, it's it's not as efficient as if you use it for the right ones. Exactly. And so when you know, I consider it a win when somebody listens to the show and they decide to drop out as a result, and I consider it a win when they decide to to stay in school as a result. But some of the biggest reasons I think for staying in school could be, I mean, some of the benefits you could enjoy might be maybe some of the relationships you'll, you'll develop some of the tools and resources that you have access to as a result of being a student there. And then if you're not going into debt, that that's a huge thing, you know, Mm -hmm. right there. And so I can definitely understand why, you know, like why not at this point, you're, you're probably gaining some benefits there and then you're actually taking what's, what's cool is that you're taking what you're learning and you're applying it immediately to something in the real world. <laughs> and I know you are because you already said the real world sucks, which is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not in that, but like, it's, it's tough, you know, like it's it tougher is, than yeah. you, you have the best of both worlds. Like you're, you're seeing what it's like to actually operate in the real world, but then you're still in, in what I would consider a bit of a safer environment, which is in, in uh, formal education. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, to kind of back that up, um, my husband originally went to a very costly university in Boston and had to leave halfway, um, which made him unfortunately have to take a gap year, which he didn't want to do. Um, and he's in debt and he doesn't have assistance and, um, he is enrolled back in college now, um, to the school that I go to. Uh, but it's, again, it's not that costly, but it's online and I am, interested you brought up the relationship part because online there's no real interaction it's just you do your work and that's pretty much it um whereas like I've never had that college interactive experience I guess like I my first year of college I went to a community college um branched off to where I live and where I live is like the middle of nowhere to be honest um (laughs) same (laughs) and the the community college branch I went to only had about 60 students and there was not a lot of kids my age, um, Mm. in classes I did take. So then, uh, when I went to online school, it wasn't that much different just because I, again, I didn't really have that interaction. Um, so I think that's interesting that you brought that up because I, I've never really had like the college experience, even though I'm in college. And that's the one thing that I always regret about not going to like a university. Mm-hmm. But it's mm-hmm. it's also been an amazing learning experience because then I am able to take these four years for myself and to grow and to grow my organization and to just become a better person. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I, I think you're, I think you're doing it right. If, again, I tell people who listen, if they do for whatever reason, uh, even if it just they, they just feel better about it, if they do decide to go to college, um, you know, at least, yeah, start some sort of side hustle, start building something on the side that you can immediately oh, yeah. apply what you're learning. So it's not, you know, we talk a lot about just in case learning versus just in time learning. And how the benefits of just-in-time learning and how learning in the context of doing and accomplishing goals 
is the, by far the most efficient, you know, and retentive way to to learn. And so, and you're doing that. And in addition, you know, the debt is such a huge thing. So, and, mm-hmm. and you're not having to deal with that, which is fantastic. Your, yeah. your husband, on the other hand, I, I, I'd be, I'd be really curious. Maybe we should get him on the show. I'd be curious to hear his, <laughs> his reasoning. Cause I'll tell you, uh, and I don't want to talk too much here, but mm-hmm. my, my wife is one who she finished a four year degree. We went 60,000 plus in debt. She got her degree in health and wellness, and, and a lot of that didn't have to be that expensive. But like you said, we, we moved around a bit. She like started and stopped and started and stopped, and some stuff didn't transfer. And uh, we yeah. ended up going into all this debt. We were really naive. And now she owns two of her own businesses and has private coaching clients and has done all this stuff and wow. is doing everything she's ever wanted to do. And she hasn't used her degree once, barely has ever mentioned that that she has it. It was completely wow. – so we're basically paying off a completely pointless – piece of paper. And this was, you know, four or five years ago before I really woke up to this. And I would just wish, I wish I I would have known because it just, it sucks to still be paying that off. And I would say with a business degree, if I don't know what he's wanting to do, if he's wanting to do, he wants to uh, become a CPA. Okay. So, you know, and that, that makes more sense. I would say if you want to start your own business, then I don't think that it's necessarily worth it to earn that business degree. But if you're wanting exactly. to work in more of a well-established, uh, you know, environment as, as management or yeah, CPA that, yeah, that, that definitely has its value. But anyways, this enough talking about this, I, I yeah. do actually <laughs> want to get into uh, the diverse gaming coalition. So tell me, tell me how, that started. So you'd mentioned that that you were bullied to the point where was it that you dropped out of uh, high school or you you left mm-hmm. high school? It sounds like you had a you know an, an interesting time and that really drove you, give you the motivation to start this. And so like what what happened there? You know, can, tell us about that experience. Yeah. So um, I dropped out of high school, and I a big reason for that was the bullying. Um, but I had a lot of other reasons, um, to drop out. And, um, another one of those reasons was, um, I hated school. Uh, school to me, uh, was just complete crap. Um, I didn't feel like (laughs) I was learning what, what I should have been learning. I feel like, um, the teachers cared more about test scores than, actual educate quality mm-hmm. ed- education um and i wasn't motivated to do any of it and mind you i was i was a good student i got a's and b's i was in some honors and ap classes but i just wasn't feeling it so um eventually when i did leave everyone was so shocked because they're like oh, why is such a decent student doing this and you know i said because it's something that didn't make me happy, um, to say the least. Um, and I wanted to change that up a bit. Um, so I went to a program that helps high school dropouts obtain their GED. Um, it's a program, when I explain the program, um, I guess it's only something that I have in my area, which I was fortunate to have. Um, but... Mm-hmm. It was a program that helped you get your GED, uh, build your job resume, help you find jobs, see if you want to take the route into a technical school, which I thought was great because I feel like high schools never mention <laughs> technical schools at all. Um, it's true. Which is a huge option for people. And yep. um, so I completed that program. Um, usually it takes people three to six months. It took me three days to complete all the work that I had to do, but I had to essentially stay there like an extra two weeks, uh, just to wait to take my test, my GED test. And, um, I got my GED and when I got it, I felt like I was like, okay, what's, what's the next step? Like, I know I want to go to college, but I'm going to have to wait for that. Cause I got my GED in March. So I had to wait couple months to um, actually start college and I was kind of lost and I said well you know I've been volunteering for a little bit and it's something that I love doing and it's something that I essentially want to do for the rest of my life um, 
why not take my experiences that I have gone through and make it into an organization that I could help other people. And um, that's what I did. And um, I started by just taking everything I knew, all the people that I've met throughout the years and saying, I have this idea. I want to do something to help other people going through what I had gone through. And the response was amazing. And um, I was able to create a few projects. Um, One of my projects is an anti-bullying comic book, which is just about complete. We're about to print it and everything. And, um, you know, I... Wait, did you say a comic book? Yes, I did. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Yeah, and, you know, I never... Had I would never be in the place I am now if I had went to a university like I have planned my entire high school career. Because mm-hmm. at a university, they say academics, uh, you know, join some clubs, meet new people. That's it. You know, it's just mm-hmm. kind of a straight path that everyone wants you to follow. And um, again, I don't think I would be able to even support this organization if I had went down that path. Yeah, no, I I mean, absolutely. I mean, you have a, so you you said you're doing online school, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you're in a really sweet position where you can, you can work a little to pay to pay the bills and then you're, you're doing school online. And so you you have a lot more time to work on, on your business there. Um, so you did, so you dropped out. So you are a dropout. I mean, you dropped out of high school (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and I mean, how really quick, how did that go? Like, what did your parents think? I mean, it's not every day that, you know, somebody who's doing really well in high school still decides like, hey, just, you know, screw it. I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my parents were clearly shocked uh, because I was doing good in high school and they they knew that. And um, they were pissed uh, to be honest um (laughs) they because they thought you know you're doing well why why do you want to do this like you have such a good path ahead of you like why would you want to ruin it and i i asked them like well what am i ruining because you know i i have prospects that i want to follow and i want to still do things with my life and um so everyone told me not to drop out um (laughs) Literally everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, They made me talk to guidance counselors at high school. They made me talk to principals. All these people. Really? Yeah. (laughs) Guidance counselors? Yeah. It was a little (laughs) over the top, um, but I decided to follow. But you stuck to your guns, huh? Yeah. I I decided to follow my gut instinct, um, which I've honestly never done before up until that point. Uh, So I did, and... um, it all started there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I mean, see, that's what I'm talking about for people listening. Like that, that I think is the essence of what makes a, a successful dropout. What makes the, a lot of the members that are that are in our community right now. It's this, it's this following your gut, sort of following your natural curiosities. I mean, when you can get out of your own your own head and out of these various systems and, and cultures that we grew up with for for long enough to just think and get real into it, it like uh, just get inside yourself and think like what do I really want like what am I curious about what do I want to to build what do I want to contribute to the world some stuff comes up to the surface and I think I think most of us have have like a, a at least an inkling of like hey this is something that I I would really like to do like it's something that just keeps just keeps bothering you in your head uh but it's it's so tempting to just sort of fall back on what's really familiar what everybody else is doing and to just what I like to say is stay on the conveyor belt but it's it's like what you're talking about it's this tenacity to say and this sort of rebellious spirit like in a good way to say like no I'm just I'm going to follow my gut. I know I'm going to go do what I feel like I was uniquely born to do. And uh, it's, it's a shame. It's really is a shame when people don't choose to, to follow that because exactly, yeah. I think there are things you could do like nobody else. I, I would venture to guess nobody else would have started building the diverse gaming coalition. If you, if you hadn't, that just wouldn't exist. And yeah. fast forward five years from now, who knows all the lives you'll touch and the people you'll you'll help 
And it's, it's your duty to do that. And if you would have said in the beginning, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to, I'm going to go to university, kind of stayed on, on this, on this, this path. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. A lot of, it would have been unfair, I think, to a lot of people that you'd impact in the future. Well, yeah, that was, you know, thank you for saying that. Um, that's really, really helpful. Um, for me doing the work that I do, it kind of, it could get to me sometimes. It could bring back some memories. So, you know, I appreciate those, those <laughs> kind words. Yeah. So, I mean, when you say it brings back memories, are you talking about memories of, of bullying, stuff like that, harassment? Uh, yeah. Um, that, uh, that, that's a big one. And also people telling me that I can't do it. Um, so that's a, that's another big one. Like, uh, you know, you're just a high school dropout. Um, doing, you know, doing this, you know, crap. Why, what do you think you're going to do? And I said, well, you know, I think I'm going to help people. So yeah, I appreciate you saying those things. Well, you know, if you look back in, on history at all the people that have had the biggest, the biggest impacts on the world and have done the most, they're also the people that's, that got the most criticism. That's uh, it's, it, I mean, it's, there's a, I can't remember who said it and I'm probably going to butcher this quote but somebody said if you if you don't let's see if you don't want to, it's like if you don't want to be ah i'm 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 totally butchering it in fact one second. i definitely understand it though <laughs> i'm gonna cut i gotta get that quote and I'll cut, <laughs> I'll cut all this awkward stuff out if you don't want to be criticized oh there it is um 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 let's get to something i can read yeah, that's it. So the the quote is, if you fear uh, to be criticized, say nothing, do nothing, and be nothing. Um, and I just think that's such a that's such an appropriate quote for somebody who's in your position, somebody who's in my position. Most of the people that come on this show, yeah. If you if you fear being criticized and people questioning what you're doing and all the things I'm sure you're dealing with right now. Just say nothing, do nothing, and be nothing. And so, and there's this trend, right? If you look back in history, all the people that have made the biggest impacts, they, they, they are the people like fortune favors the bold, and they're the people that stepped out in boldness and just, just did. Like there's doers, and then those who watch others do. And so, I think at the end of the day, you know, Abby, it might, you still might be at this. I do remember being at the stage where where you're at, where people are still kind of looking at you and like, what are they? What are they doing? Like, they're going to regret this. And, but, you know, I can promise you if you stick with it, you know, a few years down the road, you'll look back and it'll be some of the, one of the best experiences you've ever, and you'll just be a, you'll be a stronger person uh, as a result. Um, and I know there's probably a lot of fear around, <laughs> I mean, I have several businesses, uh, a couple of them are pretty well established, but even to this day, it's like, am I, Am I doing enough? Is what I'm doing going to work? Are these new yeah. things, new projects, these things I'm building, are they like, are they ever going to gain traction? Are people going to going to appreciate them, or are they just going to sort of crash and burn? And that's that's something I'm I'm even still a asking, and and I, I know you probably are too. But the reality is, even if something happens in a year from now. Uh, diverse gaming coalition it just it doesn't work out you have so much like knowledge and experience um that you've gained you'll be able to take that and and transfer it onto something else we call those transferable skills or or career capital um it's, just, it's all building on each other and so mm -hmm. anyways um when you <laughs> i'm i'm talking way too much in this interview but when you uh when I would like, to, so when you when you talk about bullying and and harassment, like what what did you actually experience? Like what was bad enough to give you the drive and the motivation to to do what you're doing right now? Was it online gaming? Um, it was both online and in person. Um, when I would go to school and have a rough time there, I would always try to at least uh find solace in video games um especially with friends uh playing video games with friends is awesome but anywho the people that <laughs> are on the opposite end who are not your friends are not that nice and uh when i just wanted to have a good time after a rough day uh sometimes that wouldn't even happen um with the 
mean, nasty people online who don't really care. And, you know, they think they're so funny and all that. But really, there's another living, breathing human on the side of each computer screen. And that's something that we don't realize when we're online. And, you know, you think you could say funny stuff or um, make jokes or mock someone or something. But in reality, they, they just don't realize that, again, there's someone on the other side of the screen. And th- that person has feelings. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I mean, when we see this. We see this with uh, even like Facebook too. If you get into, if you see like political debates and stuff, people say things to each other they would never ever say face to face. Oh yeah, because we have this uh, sort of we're sort of isolated. We have this big barrier of technology, the computer screen uh, between us. And now, when you were gaming, are you talking about just like uh, on on some sort of gaming chat, or was it like voice? Um, both. I play games that have just regular chat, um, have voice chat, have both. Um, Voice chat, voice chat, um, I think is a little rougher because that gives them Mm -hmm. more of a leeway to harass even more for two reasons. Uh, One, since I'm a girl and Mm -hmm. girl gamers are like not a thing, um, that just leaves a lot of room for harassment. And two, it's a lot easier to harass someone over voice chat than text chat because it's just so more accessible um, and much easier to do, um, which sounds weird that I'm saying that out loud. But um, it's so easy for people to ramble on and on through their microphone and to not even think about what they're saying. Yeah. No, I, absolutely. I mean, like I mentioned, I used to play a lot of Call of Duty and actually uh, actually, my brother's coming over tonight and we're playing some, so I can't say I used to. <laughs> I used to. But love, love gaming, love online gaming. I've had to sort of cut it back now or I just don't get anything done. But back yeah. in the day, I had Xbox Live and, and uh, I was on chat and would play for, for hours. And uh, so I... I, de- I definitely know what, what you're talking about. Like, it is rare. It is, like, first of all, it, everybody's always talking crap to each other, and that that's just that's just what happens. But whenever you would hear a, a girl come on the mic, it was like just instant, like it was like a crazy. nuclear bomb just like hit down and blew yeah, everything ex- up. Like, it, <laughs> it's insanity. Yeah, I mean, it was just harassment through the roof, and I, you know, I I remember just. Uh, I mean, I would never say anything. I wasn't much of a talker. I don't think I don't. I never felt like I knew enough of the games or, or was a good enough player to like be involved in much of the chat. I basically just <laughs> listened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but man, it was like it was always so. It was so you know surprising and and like sad what what would happen and uh, you know you could tell a lot of these gals who who were gaming they had gotten pretty tough like a lot of them you know knew how to dish it back you know some of them didn't but it, it was amazing how uh, yeah how much sort of bullying and harassment there was especially targeted more towards female mm-hmm. gamers so um, now that you've now that you've built Diverse Gaming Coalition, you've really been in the space for a while. How how big of a problem is bullying and harassment? I see. I, I think I remember you had some you know stats online, but you know is this mm-hmm. something that's that's becoming a bigger and bigger issue? I guess. Um, definitely. I mean, a lot of the gaming companies and websites and social media, so all of that. Um, are trying to roll back some protections and stuff and uh, to combat this issue. But because of that, um, I think at least that it's getting a lot worse. Um, You know, people want to make jokes on it and hate on it and all that. And it just creates a community of hate. And Mm -hmm. things are being done outside of the games which is great, but inside of the games, there's not so much that's being done. So I think there's, I guess, disconnect between what's actually happening in the games and what 
we think is happening. Um, because again, you know, there's not a lot happening, you know, within these voice chats and these text chats, um, these ways to harass people in video games. There's not much being done about that aspect of it. Um, compared to kind of like, say for example, Twitch, um, you know, they have, um, communities that you could build that they could build, um, safe spaces and then they have reporting features and all of that. But inside of the stream, say for instance, um, a chat, a chat on the stream, there's not much being done about that, um, in a sense that. People could still say whatever they want unless the person, the person's stream invoked a chat filter. People could still raid that stream and flood that chat with hate. Um, so there's a lot being done, but there's still a lot that needs to be done. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I completely agree. And I see a stat on your on your website here. It says about 58% of kids admit someone has said mean or hurtful things to them online. And I, yeah. I can definitely agree with that. In fact, I would say, honestly, I don't know how that was, you know, came up, but based on just my few years of experience online gaming, I'd say it could even be, it could even be more than that. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, heck, if you, even if you just look through like YouTube comments or something like that. Um, now I am curious to get your thoughts on some, on something. I want to, I want to dive into something here because there are there are two parts to this, right? I mean, there's there's always going to be people. There's always going to be mean people. There's always going to be mm-hmm. bad people. There's always going to be people that just don't don't give a crap about any you know reporting features, or they'll just make a new account and and continue you know harassing. Exactly. And so yeah. there's you have to combat it for sure on on that front. You know, you have to you have to suppress that um, in in you know whatever way uh, is good to do that. On the other side of it, though, you have you have the the ability to sort of have those words, you know, reflect off of you. You have sort of a a responsibility, I think, to yourself to to work on, you know, whether it's like working on, uh, well, to to basically just not take what people are saying about you seriously, and to be to be, um, you know, a certain amount of um, security. You know, I would say, I would say the people that are, and this isn't meant to be mean or anything. It's just, it's, mm-hmm. it's true. The people that are are hurt the most by others' words are typically the people that are the most insecure about themselves. And so, then the other side of the coin on how to fix this would seem to be teaching people how how to raise their self esteem, how to be more secure about themselves, and to to just not care what what people think. And I know. You're no stranger to that, having just you know said you you still have people <laughs> asking like what what are you doing? You're a college, you know high school dropout and and building this this uh, nonprofit that who knows if it's going to work out or not. And so I guess what what are your your thoughts on that on this balance between sort of I guess suppressing the 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 haters and the people that do spread this harassment and bullying, and then teaching people to to be more resilient towards it. Um, so it's interesting that you say that because, um, whereas the people who, t- um, really take these comments to heart, um, how they may or may not be insecure. If you look at the other side of it, um, as the bully, those are also the people that have the insecurities as well. And, um, uh, at Diverse Gaming Coalition, we like to look at both sides because, Everyone wants to call the bully, for, I, for lack of better terms, uh, take the bully, the person who's bullying someone, and kind of fire at them because, you know, why are they doing such a thing when in reality that doesn't make anything better. Um, it just makes matters worse. And um, I definitely agree that we need to, you know, kind of find new ways to combat bullying like boosting our self-esteem um which is something that we do work on uh, through our social medias because that's a huge factor in people's self-esteem is social media what they talk about on there the popularity all that kind of stuff um so we do advocate that um but we also advocate the other side of it and you know 
Um, what is the bully going through? Um, the person who is bullying, what are they going through? Um, you know, do they have something, is there a reason that they're doing what they do? And I think just giving everyone the same amount of love and compassion that you would want to receive yourself is extremely important. Um, and to not, not fire back those comments, although maybe they, maybe they keep firing stuff at you. Maybe you just want to burst out and say all these mean things back. But in reality, that person might be going through the same thing that you are now going through. So, you, you know, I think, in my opinion, just being more kind to people, um, not tr- not being so mean, maybe not posting that on Facebook or leaving that comment or whatever, I think is the start of it um, because, you know, we're not going to, you know, change a bully overnight. <laughs> we're not going to change this issue overnight. But I think starting with, you know, why do I even – make these comments in the first place why do i even care about this in the first place and then finding within yourself your self-love and your finding within yourself that you as a person are so much valuable than what these people think and you know just to wrap up um being kind to everyone, I think that's a big factor. It doesn't matter if someone's bullying you. It doesn't matter whatever the case. If you could recognize that you need a little bit more kindness in your life, then you should add that to your life. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I like your the approach that you're actually looking into what, what might be the root cause of, of why somebody is bullying um, that, you know, you're not just trying to s- s- tell them like, Hey, Hey, you shut up, stop, stop bullying her or asking, yeah, exactly. but it's more like, why, why do you feel the need to do that? I, I mean, I think, I think that's great. Um, uh, because I mean, definitely like, like I remember listening to some of these gaming chats and stuff and somebody throws out an insult or harasses somebody else. And even some of the, like some of the gals that would get, they'd get an insult thrown their way or harassed. Um, a lot of them would would dish it right back, you know, and and mm-hmm. it becomes this game of of who's, you know, who can who can dish it out best, you know, that sort of thing. But then, arguably, you can say that both of them have sort of fallen into this this bullying, harassing category, and you know, unless unless they're good friends and maybe they're just razzing each other or something, it's 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 mm-hmm. still not not very helpful, not very positive. And so, I'd be curious, you know, what do you? What do you think is the best way to deal with a bully? Or I guess maybe a better question would be because I I don't know if you're – I'm probably – I don't know. We're getting to the point where we will probably think about having kids here and, and at some point I know that mm-hmm. this is going to be something I have to talk about with them. So if and when you have kids and they're, they're getting bullied, they're, they're gaming online, what are you going to tell them, I guess? I, I find that question interesting because oftentimes uh, parents' advice um, it's kind of shit, uh, to be honest, uh, for a lot of reasons, you know, because every situation of bullying is different. Um, the environment, who's bullying them, um, could take into factor what they should actually do. Uh, but Again, I think we confuse our kids uh, by giving them so many different opinions on what they should do because the parents, at least um, in the area that I live, the parents like to say, you know, fire back at them and maybe even get violent with it. And that's not the way to go. And that just really confuses kids because, you know, kids trust their parents. Um, Mm -hmm. And then you have the principals and teachers telling them you know come to us but then sometimes they don't even do anything about it what i think is the most effective way to deal with bullying is if you're someone who is older like myself um i think sitting down taking a moment to think about the person think about you know is this happening 
because, you know, are they angry at themselves or is this happening just because they want to do it? Um, think about those factors. Um, think about ways that maybe you can not fix it to yourself because that's never a good option. You always want to get someone to intervene or help. Um, but to have your friends support you, have a group of friends support you, um, you know, maybe have a place you could go, um, say if it's in a school setting, if you feel uncomfortable. Um, and if those things don't get better, I say go to a teacher or an adult. Um, but sometimes the option isn't always a the best again because sometimes it can make matters worse it could um lead to more bullying because yeah, then um, you're like a you're like a tattletale exactly and um there's never really a right way to deal with bullying um but try to think about you know what what's causing this or are they just being a jerk or you know is there something that's really going on that maybe they could use some they could use someone to talk to or something. And again, just kill them with kindness. Don't, don't try to be snarky back. Cause that just fuels the bullying. Just try to be nice to them and see what happens. You'd be surprised where it could take mm-hmm. you. See that what you just said there at the end, that is what I would say. I personally believe is the key. I mean, there's a, I think it's a concept out of the Bible, the heaping coals on their head or something like that. It's, it's, you know, to, Responding to harassment or a bully by essentially being being kind back, um, it because it 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 sort of diffuses what their original intention was is just just sort of mm-hmm. make you mad and escalate things and make themselves feel better. I mean, you're just you're you're doing it for them. You're making them feel better for for themselves. I mean, it just diffuses their whole reasoning for even starting to bully in the first place. But Boy, I'm I'm just trying to think of different times. Like, I know, I, like I know when I was growing up, I was bullied. I was a, uh, I was homeschooled, um, and so I would go to like public school every once in a while for different events. Or I would go to when I was really young. Uh, my mom would drop me off at a public like daycare when she'd go to the gym and stuff. So I was hanging out with, and, and I was kind of the weird kid in a way, you know, because I not just because yeah, I was definitely. homeschooled, but just because I wasn't used to hanging out in those in those Settings, environments yeah. as much as other kids were. And uh, and so I I do remember you know getting getting bullied sometimes, but I do remember one of the most effective responses. And even to this day, you know, if somebody throws something at me, it just it's a I don't know. It's a, it just stings a bit. The best response I've always found is just to stay quiet, like to, to, on, to just not respond. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Like at all, because there, there's no reaction from me. Um, essentially, uh, ignore them. And then once that sort of diffused this, this original intention to bully me, uh, so just at, like be pleasant towards them at least, <laughs> you know, somebody, yeah. somebody says, you know, you suck. You just kind of ignore it, go on and do your thing when they seem like they've calmed down be like, how's your day going? It's, you know, it just, it, all of a sudden you're, you're, you're their friend then. But I have another yeah. question. I would wonder what you would say <laughs> because there's you getting bullying or you bullying somebody else. And then there's a situation when you're watching somebody else get bullied. Oh yeah. And I would be curious what you'd say about that. And I, cause well, you tell me what, what, what you think. And then I, I have a story. Okay. Well, being a bystander to bullying is say, especially in a setting where everyone's same age. So it makes it a little bit more comfortable is extremely important that you try your best to intervene and try to diffuse the situation because I think when it gets to a place where you're a bystander and you're witnessing bullying by say it's someone in your grade bullying another peer of yours Mm -hmm. that having another peer your same age rather than saying a teacher getting involved is a lot more comfortable for everyone involved and kind of makes the point across that, 
oh, shit, maybe I am doing something a little bit wrong. Rather than a teacher, because teachers can be kind of maybe a little condescending or Mm -hmm. they're looking down on you or something. Um, So being a good bystander for bullying is extremely important. And, you know, even saying something as simple as, hey, can you just leave them alone? I think that just really, really helps any situation of bullying because it just throws them off guard. Yeah, and possibly they, then they might at least <laughs> direct their bullying towards you and leave the other person alone. <laughs> Basically sacrifice yourself. <laughs> but Hey, but if that's something that you're comfortable dealing with rather than someone who may be a little bit more quiet or you know maybe have some mental health issues if that's something that you're willing to step up and kind of be the hero so to speak in that situation then that's that's something that's awesome of you to do and but it's something that we really need because if you see someone getting bullied especially especially bullied constantly um being that kind of bystander um, it's really helpful for people that can't speak up for themselves sometimes yeah, I would say, I think you're right in saying like that, that is the one situation where, so if you're being bullied, you know, I think one of the best things you could probably do is, you know, basically just ignore it, kind of be quiet, don't respond, uh, it diffuses the mm-hmm. situation. If you're seeing somebody else being bullied, I think that's one of the more rare situations where, like you said, you should, you should stand up and take some sort of action, whether, you know, that's words, yeah. or sometimes it might even have to get physical. Um, I mean, the, the, Again, at the same the same daycare, there was a kid, and he was the he was the bully. I still remember his name. His name was Bryce. So Bryce, if you're listening, man, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoy the story. But he 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 would he'd bully everybody, and I remember him. He picked on this one kid uh, pretty consistently, and so I remember I started picking on Bryce, and I sort of remember taking the heat off of this kid. And uh, do you know the giant Lego blocks? Like uh, they're they're like Legos, but they're just they're yeah. huge. They yeah, they're yeah, in daycares yeah. everywhere, and and so he like <laughs> started picking those up and chucking them at me. And I I just remember I started picking them up and chucking them at him too. And we got into this like toy fight. Uh, you know, you're you're like you know six five six years old. It wasn't oh, a big yeah. deal looking back, but you know back then it was like a war, it was a war zone pretty much. Like I was I was risking yeah. my life and. <laughs> Like I remember, I remember winning. I remember like I hit him with a toy, like in his head. Like I just, I, I hit him in the head with a toy, and it hurt him. And and I, of course, I got in big trouble with the the daycare person who came mm-hmm. running over later, and she didn't see the whole thing, and and so she thought it was my fault. But I remember after that, he's he stopped. Um, at least when I was there. <laughs> uh, huh. And then there was another time in high school. I. Just I just remember this this gal. She was laying on the ground studying, and one of my uh, male classmates went over, and they were good friends and all. But he like he stood on top of her back, and and you know it was funny for like a second, and then she was basically like, "I can't breathe. You're you're too heavy." Like he had all his weight on, like just standing mm-hmm. on her, and uh, and he wouldn't get off. And I was like across the room, and there was there was stuff going on, but I was like watching this, and she got to the point where. She was like crying, like actually crying and saying like, get off of me. And he eventually did. And there was like, there was no harm done or anything, but it was a little bit traumatizing for her and I didn't do anything. And it was like, it ate me up for the longest time. Like I should have walked Mm. over there and just shoved the guy um, and said, don't do that. You know, like you said. And so there's, you know, missed, missed opportunities there. But I think that's one scenario where you just, I don't know, you got to step in. Yeah, um, I find it interesting that you bring up a story from a, when you were a lot younger because when you're a lot younger, I think it's different than, uh, say, a middle or high school setting because you're more aware of what you're doing rather than when you're five or six years old. Uh, being that young, that teacher definitely should have seen that, no, seen, knowing that you were in a daycare uh, they should have been watching you, mm-hmm. but um, you know, a setting like that—that's definitely a place where uh, no child that age is in the right mindset to, you know, 
be the do these kinds of things like get involved or step up if someone needs help um but in a setting like the high school um like you were saying um yeah and i think i think just getting involved say in that situation if you had stepped up makes you look more of a better person than not getting involved just because in her mind she could have thought you were also the bad guy because you just watched um but you know admitting that that you did something like that is the first step to kind of making sure that doesn't happen again and you know i appreciate you for admitting something like that but um you know you know from those experiences and you know life is just learning experience you learn these things as you go learning that has now made you a better person and more aware of what to do say when you do want to have kids when your kids are going through a situation of bullying um you know what to do or you know what to do when they say this you know this girl in my class she's she doesn't look like she's happy all the time the kids pick on her and stuff I don't know what to do so now you do know what to do and you do know how to answer his question so yeah I think that's I think that's a good skill to have Absolutely. Well, Abby, I've got uh, just one or two more questions for you here, and I kind of want to—I want to switch gears and go back to something we were talking about a little bit yeah. earlier because I—I just asked this question in the the successful dropouts Facebook group today. But you know, you were talking about how it can get sort of frustrating and maybe even a little depressing sometimes when you know you're when you can obviously feel or hear people, you know, judging you for these decisions you've made to sort of to, to follow your mm-hmm. gut and build something you, you truly believe in and sort of step off the, the conveyor belt. So I know mm-hmm. that we get in those moments where you feel sort of stuck and unmotivated. I'm curious, what what do you do to become motivated again? Um, so the big thing for me... Um, I have a twin and, um, my twin stayed in high school and graduated and we went to the same high school and everything. So for me, it was a lot harder because I saw him do all the things that I was going to do, but never did. And I think just getting off of social media and getting away from that had, has helped me kind of do what I want to do instead of, you know, being upset about not being able to go to prom or, you know, not being able to actually graduate or walk down aisle with a cap and gown. Um, so I think removing myself from that, um, not caring about that has helped me grow and move past all the things that I wanted to do, but didn't and look at the stuff that I now can accomplish because of the position I'm at now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> there's a, it definitely helps to get off of social media for a while. I mean, it's definitely a place where, uh, I mean, people post the best parts of their lives on social media because everybody wants to look exactly. good, right? And this, this can cause exactly, you yeah. if you're not feeling like you're in a good spot or you're pretty prone to just some, some negative self talk, you can quickly start to, become envious or jealous of other people, which is just, just not productive. So mm-hmm. that's definitely a good step. Well, Abby, uh, we're coming down to the end of our time here. I I've really enjoyed talking to you. I, I think we're, I think you're doing some, some really cool stuff. And again, just want to commend you for sort of, uh, engaging with this successful dropout philosophy, even before you knew that this community existed and just, just stepping off the conveyor belt, despite, uh, all the naysayers, despite what everybody was, you know, said, and being being an outlier, being an innovator, um, and having the the audacity and the ambition to actually pursue your your dreams. Um, so, um, I commend you on that. And uh, Thank wh- you. where can we uh, where where can we find you? Where can we get in touch with you? So you could go to my website. It's diversegaming.co. We have Facebook, Twitter. Instagram, which is all Diverse Gaming Co. 
Um, Facebook would just be backslash Diverse Gaming Co. Um, we also have a YouTube and a Twitch channel. Um, we're going to start using those more regularly. And you could also shoot me an email at contact at Diverse Gaming Co. If you want to reach out to me personally and have a talk or something, <laughs> whatever you want to talk about. Awesome. Well, successful dropouts, you are the average of the five people you hang around the most. And today you've been hanging out with Abby and Kylan, learning what it takes to drop out, grind, and succeed. For everything we talked about today, head over to SuccessfulDropout.com and type Abby into the search bar, and the show notes will pop right up. And as always, stay hungry, stay foolish.